Welcome to Dance to Heal. I'm your host, Jenny C. Cohen. Join me as I share stories of how dance and movement can bring healing in a way that is safe and tailored to your life. I'm a cancer survivor, mother of two, and an award-winning performer who found that movement was vital to my recovery. I created Dance to Heal Wellness and also authored the best-selling book, Outside in Recovery, Dancing My Way Back to Myself After Breast Cancer. I will bring new techniques to help you on your dance journey and healing path. Are you ready to move? Dance to Heal starts now. Amy Lynn is a professional mixed media artist and an international best-selling author. As a personal growth expert and mentor, she helps her clients experience the transformation they deserve by connecting creativity and intuition, using unique creative tools like the artist's oracle, the art of letting go, in her course called Art Without Boundaries, Unlocking Your Inner Artist. And I'm just so excited to welcome Amy Lynn Johnson to this podcast. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here. (laughs) So those of you who are accessing the podcast, you want to go to the YouTube channel just to see the beautiful artwork behind Amy right now. It's exquisite. Please tell us (laughs) why you do what you do and what what led you to where you are now, Amy. Well... I've always been artistically inclined, and as a little girl, I just always wanted to draw and draw animals and nature and things like that. And I found out that it kind of gave me a little escape from sort of a dramatic home life, I'll say, um, because that was kind of troubling. You know, I had we had some issues in our family. So art was really a way for me to just go into my own little happy place. And when I would present a piece of art to, you know, my parents or my neighbor or kids at school, they would just, they would seem so happy. And uh, it just makes me happy to see other people get happy. So um, that's, that's really how it got started. Are you a full-time artist now, Amy? So I'm still in the corporate world, um, but I I spend a lot of time creating art. So um, I'm sort of at the top of my game in what I do in business. And um, I'm having a little more time now, free time on the weekends and stuff to pursue my, my artwork. And that's going very well. You know, it's always kind of been a dream to be able to do that. So um, I am, but I, I went through a period um, years ago, I'll say, where I found myself kind of just unable to create. I, I went through some, like a really bad year. I called it my year from hell Mm -hmm. sort of thing. Uh, A lot of bad stuff happened and I just couldn't concentrate and I couldn't get clear on what I wanted to do. And I just, I couldn't sit still long enough, you know? And so I kind of put it away for a while. Um, And then I, slowly started to try other things. I tried doing some paper cutouts because I love uh, Henri Matisse, which I think most people are familiar with. And he did that when he wasn't able to paint. And so it inspired me. And that kind of helped me get back into the groove a little bit. I made a little bit of jewelry because I found I could sit down and, you know, string beads for 10 minutes and that 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 would help me get my my creative stuff going, but without, you know, getting into a a big drawing or a painting. So eventually I found that I had some negative Mm self-talk that would kind of just get in my way. And so I had a I had a number of years that I needed to work on that. And, um, you know, I had the, I had some help. I got some help with counselor and doing some things to, to, to correct that. But I ended up creating a solution for myself that turned into, you know, much later something I wanted to share with other artists because I can't be the only one that 
that goes through things like that, right? So I knew that if it helped me, that there's a good chance it could help other people. And that's how I developed what what's now called the Artist's Oracle Deck. Ooh, okay. So <laughs> let's give everybody a little bit of a backstory. Amy Lynn and I, we're both in a collaboration book called the Creative Life Book collaboration book that win we went number one in different countries and multiple categories because mm -hmm. it was this collective awareness of how healing art is mm -hmm. and our world needs it so much right now oh. and so please tell us about what your chapter which chapter number are you i think i'm 26 which number are you i think i'm like 32 mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. so yeah tell us um, about your, your chapter yeah, so I, I write in there um, about this process that I started using that was called the letting go box. Mm -hmm. And that I have, um, oh, I think it's sitting right up there behind me, but uh, you can kind of see it. I think it says the art of letting go, but um, it's just a way to uh, handle, dissipate, and and change negative thinking so that you can get to a more positive mindset. And when there are difficulties, things you can't do anything about, things you're worried about, and stuff that's constantly on your mind, I, I discovered that it helps so much to paint it out, draw it out, write it out, however you want to do it, and then just sort of put it in the let go box. And then throughout the day, when those things come back to your mind, you, ju you can just say, you know what, I I decided to let that go. I made a decision to let that go, to turn away from that negative thinking. And I put my paper in the little box and, you know, I, I want to focus on something more positive. And just that simple little tool uh, helps me tremendously. And it is something I still use today. <laughs> oh, I love that. I think we were introduced to that type of technique with the putting sad, out of control thoughts into a, a, a type of box in your mind. And I mm -hmm. like the way you actualize it in a physical activity. Because sometimes yeah. there are those of us who can't actually visualize that or mm -hmm. it's not as empowering, you know, um, right. I recently came across a, um, a little video, I think it was on the internet talking about how they didn't like the word empower because it meant you were powerless. Hmm. To needing to be empowered. And I still use it in this context because I hmm. like that you put the power back in, in our hands. Right. Like write it out, right? And then put it in a box to deal with hmm. later. Because oftentimes right. it's invasive. It's in our heads. We can't get yeah. it out. Right. right. It's like a toothache versus a, a hangnail or right. like, a, <laughs> like a broken ankle. The broken ankle definitely hurts. It's still away from your head. Mm -hmm. And the toothache is right in your skull. It's just so you can't get away from it. Right? Yeah. yeah I love that. Um, yeah. For me, I love your speaking about how when you went through your year of difficulty, it actually it affected your creative process mm. and you were always using it since your childhood right has a mm -hmm. form of expression yeah. there are people listening in who have never even tried it they don't mm -hmm. even know they have this awesome modality yeah that require a therapist right right so how can they start this process i mean i will i uh i don't our viewers can see i'm asian of descent right yeah <laughs> our hearers they can't tell from my voice that i was born in taiwan to peasant mm -hmm family members. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe in something like art. I mean, they, they knew what art was. I mean, I came from Asian culture. However, <laughs> that was never something I was allowed to pursue. So only right. in later years now, as an adult, mm -hmm. I'm now allowed to play in art. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. would you suggest for people? How do they start playing in art? Yeah, yeah. Well, I will say that that was, I was um, kind of raised in a similar uh, with a similar mindset in the family that art was not that, you know, you were an art, being an artist was not an option, you know, that's fine, but, or it looks great, but there was always a but attached to it, right? So you better get busy and find a real job, you know, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I recognize that 
my parents did the very best they could. But like you said, as an adult then to say, you know what, this is something I want to do. Um, but then being affected by you know, so many negative things, you know, difficulties outside your control, um, it really it can have effect like a blocking type of effect. Um, and so if you're, if you haven't tried it, um, what, what happened in my case was eventually along with doing things like learning the art of letting go, learning to put my problems in a little box and then go on with my, um, pursuing positive things is I started to have that same trouble when I would go into my art studio, I would have, you know, everyone has a busy life. Maybe you have an hour free and you just want to make something, but I would get in there and I would start having all this option anxiety, almost like, I don't know what to do. I want to do something, but I don't really have time to like plan a whole thing out or whatever. So what I developed for myself was um, the artist Oracle deck, which is a tool that you can use to quickly use your intuition. You can like pull out cards of five different colors. And when you get one of each color, what you have is a recipe for starting a drawing. So you'll have a suggestion for um, a subject matter that for me, it comes out of nature. So it'll be, you know, something like a flower or your favorite, you know, tree or whatever. And then you'll have a suggestion for a type of composition. Is it going to be vertical? Is it going to be horizontal? And then there's also a card for suggestions about colors. So you don't have to recreate the wheel. If you just want to jump in and start making something, you can do it within just a few minutes. And mm -hmm. having the cards, being able to use your intuition to choose, I found is so much easier than having to try to like think something up, right? So it's much easier to choose between A, B, and C than to choose between every option in the universe, you know? <laughs> oh, so, it. yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And the other thing it does is it helped me jump right past that inner critic that would say, you don't know what you're doing. You don't have time. It's not going to look right. Why should you even bother? You've got work to do, you know. Um, but using the Oracle deck, you can just shuffle the cards, pick out a plan mm -hmm. and jump right into the fun part of getting started making something. I love your acknowledgement of that inner critic that we all oh. have to get rid of. Right, yeah. Amy Lynn? I mean, I found play as an adult. So I want to be clear. I raised and homeschooled two kids. I facilitated play. I did not play. I wasn't one right. of the parents that got in and got dirty with them. I, mm -hmm. cause I was an occupational therapist. So I facilitated play and right. they had great play. They grew a lot. I was just in control of the play. So as I learned to play, I've, what came to mind when you were telling me this last portion was, are you right-handed or left-handed Amy? I'm mostly right-handed. Are you ambidextrous? Sometimes you write with your left? I, sometimes I do for um, as a way to get my brain to switch off. That's another tool that you can use is to use yes. your less dominant hand. And that is one. I think that's a suggestion that's in the um, Oracle deck, you know, is to start out making something with your, your non-dominant hand. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Well, do. so the thing is, so I want to share with the audience that, when I was growing up, I was naturally left-handed. So if we understand the right and left hemispheres of your brain, right? Your mm. analytical side, which is your left, is controlled by your right. And the yeah. right side of your brain, which is the creative process, right? That intuition part of you is controlled by the left side of your hand. Of your right. Body. So then what's happening now is when, when I was naturally left-handed, they forced me to be right-handed. Mm. And I want to say, I think all of us, when we're children, are into like, I'm doing almost like a comparison. 
So don't don't hold me to the exact com- the, this exact storyline. Meaning we're all figuratively left handed, mm-hmm. but we're forced to be right handed to mm-hmm. shut down the intuition to not mm-hmm. be as creative. Right mm-hmm. nowadays, maybe a little bit less. So it's still mm-hmm. the money makers are few and far in between as artists. Mm-hmm. We're all business people who know numbers mm-hmm. and are analytical. Right. So oh, I love this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that is in here. Yeah. So right? um yeah, I just I saw it seemed like there was this um I got a little fascinated with kind of the tarot card people at one time and I watched some of that and um it's been some time ago but I remember thinking gosh, you know, if I just had this ready-made plan almost like if you could lay your outfits out at night, then you know what you're going to wear in the morning, right? You just make a few choices. And uh, I know my brain gets tired. Our brains get so tired of deciding, uh, you know, all the millions of decisions that we have to make constantly. So eliminating some of those and being able to just jump right in and, and get fresh ideas and fresh suggestions and, and being able to let yourself play, like you said, um, that's, it's just such a gift. And it's, that's really like the main thing I want to share with people is that, you know, it brings me joy. I think it, it will bring other people joy if you're not, you know, trying to make yourself into a a perfect, right? A perfectionist mode that doesn't help at all. Um, But learning to play, learning to let yourself explore, experiment, find out more about what you like, what you might like, what you, you know, want to do. Um, But then having a guide, like a ready-made guide that is not a gadget, right? Uh, You know, something tactical, something practical, that's kind of my nature anyway. So um, yeah, I just love it. I think what audience, what we really want you to get out of this is right, is that you are your own best advocate for what directions to play in. Mm. And I love the use of the tarot cards because Mm -hmm. I am a tarot reader. I've been trained by Mm -hmm. some of the best. I do it a lot for myself. Now I can incorporate check-ins with my kids where I'll do a tarot reading for them. And Uh they're the ones cutting the deck because basically we need permission to access our own subconscious where all of the answers are. Right. Correct? Yeah. And I love Correct. your your advising people and really encouraging them with your tool mm-hmm. to access their own subconscious. That's really yeah. key, right? Because, right. you know, oftentimes you set up the, that outfit, right? Yeah. Let's say you wake up. What if it's a bad weather and that outfit right. isn't the best? <laughs> Right. So what's your tuition going to tell you? Because right. oftentimes, like, you never know when it's your conscious, 10% right. of the brain going, I got to go into a business meeting. I want to look professional, right? Or, yeah. whatever, right? or yeah. I think I really want to just have fun. And then something else shifts. And how do we stay flexible? That's where right. that play part with comes. And I love, mm-hmm. I love the part that you talk about where it's just so permission mm-hmm. to not be mm-hmm. perfect. Right. Right. Permission to not be perfect. And I definitely needed that. Um, and I'm not sure how that matter, how that happened. And honestly, it doesn't matter how it happened. What matters is how am I, how am I going to reduce that, you know, or remove that or retrain, train that. So, um, so in the Oracle deck, there are, Yeah, a focal point, which is going to be like a natural element, since this is my first one for artists, this art deck. Um, Then there's the, what I say, color palette. There is a design tip or a design focus, like something to really. And then this was totally inspired um, to add a a question, right, for personal reflection, So I'm a person who writes. I love journaling. I love the gratitude lists and all that kind of stuff. And uh, in the personal growth department, I think, you know, everyone can use a little help there, right? (laughs) 
So like some of these questions, they were, they all just came to me like a download. I hadn't planned on putting them in the deck, but once I started creating it, it just came out. So questions like this, um, question for reflection. What if I had a guarantee that everything I'm worried about today was going to work out just fine? Perfect. Isn't it? And it's, oh, it just gave me such relief. Like if it's going to be fine, I can take this hour and play. You know? Ooh, ooh. And here's yeah. the thing. Here. I here's the thing. So audience, stay with us here, right? Because Amy Lynn <laughs> basically said in her practice of being open, she mm. got this message to include mm. the questions. Yes. So how often do we do that in our lives? How often do you stay open to right. downloads of such importance? Mm. Mm. We're encouraging you to do that for this year. So what's the best way to get in touch with you, Amy? Artistamylynn.com. It's, uh, there's a lot of free stuff on my webpage. There's um, a free ebook about the art of letting go. Um, there's more information on the Oracle decks there. I have a new deck coming out called the art of letting go. So that's kind of more like a, a daily or a weekly. Um, I'm really excited about that one. And then what else is there? There's, uh, I think there's, um, you can get a free art print um, there. So if you just go to artistamylynn.com and it'll be the same on YouTube and Facebook, Instagram as well. Beautiful. So I want to clarify audience. It's Amy, A-M-Y and Lynn is L-Y-N-N. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So my, uh, artist amylynn.com yes because sometimes i'll spill it spell it with just like an i or one right n. so again just yeah repeat you're going to spell it artist amy l y n n.com so you can find her because yes. we were just having a conversation before i hit the record button about how like there's many jenny cohen's and yeah. there are so many jenny c cohen's who look like me so that's why i went that way right so yeah. um we're good just have to have amy back again because i find Wonderful. this conversation enthralling because she is encouraging us to be imperfectly perfect mm -hmm. and also continue to be open to channels of that creative mm -hmm. part of us just waiting for us to listen correct yeah Amy? yeah yeah and absolutely. then so she'll, she'll come back and then remember after listening to this episode you are welcome to also access my gift at dance and heal h e H E A L dot com for your gift of a movement class from me. So thank mm. you so much for coming, Amy. Thank you, audience. We'll see you next time. And thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Bye bye. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to Dance to Heal with Jenny C. Cohen. Come back next time to hear stories of recovery through movement and learn more ways that you can move your body. To work with me and continue your journey, visit outsideinrecovery.com. Are you ready to move?